What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Man, listen, when you talk about Dreamville, and we talk about how you know it's become one of the most impressive labels, roster, when you think about how talented they are and how you know they're just one of the most dominating labels, arguably, right now in the industry today. Um, you you know, we, we talk about you know Cole and Ibrahim build it up and they definitely did respectfully, but we can't talk about the buildings and the creations of Dreamville without mentioning this man here. He's been he's been a master of his craft for a long time. I'm talking about production. I'm talking about lyrically. He's just an overall, you know, I I can't, I don't want to say rapper because that would diminish how much of an artist he actually is. And so we have today, we have Chicago's own Omen. Welcome to Community Voices, man. How you feeling? I'm good, man. Thank you. I um I appreciate that introduction. That, was, that means a lot, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling great, man. I can't complain. Good, man, for sure. You know, like I said, I, I said it when, I, when we kind of first hopped on. I've been following you for a long time. If, if I've, As long as I've been a fan of Cole, I've been a fan of yours because it's like you really, if you know, if you've been there from the earlier beginning, it's hard to not know who Omen is. It's not hard to not know, you know, Enchanted. Like, what are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? So I've just always been a fan of yours too, just from the beginning. And I've seen you live a couple of times too, killing it. So like, like I said, this is just all real cool to see. Um, so I want to start this way. I know I talked about, you know, I, I've been mentioning Cole in like the early on times. And, you know, like I said, I've been a longtime fan of yours. I've talked to before, you know, the amazing, you know, the R Linux, the GID, the Earth King before that, I've been a big fan of yours. And, you know, I, I don't know a lot of people know this, but like you met Cole when you were 15, like way earlier on, like way before the dreads and all that stuff, you know? So I would love to know if you can kind of take me back to, you know, y'all's friendship how y'all kind of met and how that friendship developed and how you've kind of seen it progress over the years because I'm sure from 15 to now a lot has changed you know the bond has probably changed and strengthened and you know y'all have kids and things have changed so how, how what was that bond like when y'all first met compared to today um well it's, it's kind of a crazy story um like I said we met when I was 15 or well, I think he was 15 I think I might have been 16 uh I think actually I think you know, he might have been 14 I was 16 but mm -hmm. um you know, it was a, a way different time. So, you know, today it's, it's normal. It's nothing to hear you've met somebody on the internet and y'all become cool and that's nothing. But like back then that was like unheard of. Um, so, you know, we were, we were friends, basically we were fans of this, this rapper named Cannabis, uh, might be familiar with him, you know, oh, yeah, we, were I know. Like, we were like really huge fans of this guy. Um, and we were on this website. It's a fan site somebody made for him called Cannabis Central. Mm -hmm. And on this site, they would have like just a bunch of aspiring rappers on there. So they would have like text battle, like battling with no, just actual, like you have to read the battles, like not <laughs> like all the other. Um, so you have to like guess how the flow went. Um, and eventually had like some actual audio battles. So that's actually how we met on that site. And they had like a contest to do a song with cannabis that became like, it was actually like a scam thing, but we were like all in believing it, you know what I mean? And I actually ended up winning the contest and I reached out to Cole, like this is like AOL Instant Messenger. And like, I reached out to him, it's like trying to show him love on a song he posted, like that he submitted. I was like, man, the song is dope. And I think Cole expected me to be like feeling myself because I won. And mm -hmm. so he kind of was like, he was kind of like on some like, man, like he wasn't feeling me at first. <laughs> So I was like humble about it. And he was like, oh, this guy's cool. I can't really be a jerk. You know what I mean? So um, eventually, like we started sharing songs with each other, becoming cool. Then it became a little closer because we just had a lot of like similarities, just personality wise. Um, just very, we saw things very like the spiritual things we was into, the music taste, the uh, things that he was dealing with with his woman. I was dealing with my woman at the time. It was just very similar routes. We're both Aquarius. Our birthday is like a couple of days apart. Mm. Um, and so we just really bonded in that way. And then long story short, I had a cousin that lived in New York at the time and he was in St. John's. And so I came out to New York to visit my cousin and I was like, yo, this is a chance we could actually meet in person. Um, and it's funny because on the way to meet me at the airport, I think that was the first time he told his girl, which is his wife now, that like, yo, this is the guy I've been talking to online. And she's like, what? Like, we're about to meet him in person. We've never met him before. Like, she's tripping, you know what I mean? And so, like I said, that was just unheard of back then. But, you know, it was, it was just, uh, we just became really close friends. Just like, 
talking about how we want things to change in the industry, the, the direction we wanted things to go. And then, you know, long story short, uh, you know, he still developed that relationship. He had a meeting with Jay-Z after a series of different events. And I was just like, when that happened for him, it felt like it happened for me. That's just how, how close we were. I was, I was so excited, you know what I mean? And so um, about a year into that, I ended up actually moving to New York in about 2009. Um, and that's when I, that's when I started meeting Eve, meeting, uh, some of the other people around him at the time, uh, more people that would become part of Dreamville. And it was just an organic thing. Like everybody's vibes was right. Everybody was cool. Everybody, you know, saw things in a similar way. And so fast forward to now, it's like you said, the bond has only grown stronger. You know what I mean? It's like, obviously the lifestyles have changed to think that like we have kids, we have responsibilities, um, but, you know, I can, I can call that man anytime, any day and be like, get some off my chest. He can do the same to me. Um, you know, we talk about all types of things. And just throughout the process of even me putting out this, this next album I'm put out, I did have to call him plenty of times, you know what I mean? Because it was a lot has transpired from the, my last album to now. And so, um, you know, just for anything, I can, I can talk to him. He's a, he's a, I consider him a brother of mine. And he's just a, a great friend, you know. I mean, a great person. I love it. I love him. That and it, it's 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 special too because those kind of friends don't like people. You know, we have a lot of friends in your life, but I think we sometimes diminish how rare it is to have those friends with that amount of not just longevity of how long you know them and y'all stay close, but like what they bring into your life. You know, what I mean, because you could have friends who you know. Y'all are cool, y'all kick it, they're a good time. But like, you know, there's also those friends as you get older, you you cherish more of like how much are they bringing to your life? You know, are they watering my garden like I'm watering their garden? And for him to be that kind of person for you for this whole time and to keep that, that's like really special. That's it's, it's oh, that's, that's that's God's work, really, to put you in that. Honestly, you know? bro, like that's, that's really how I see it. It's um, you know, he's a he's an incredible artist. You know what I mean? But I feel like. The people that really get to know him, it's like even better than the artist is the person he is. You know, I mean, he's just a he's just a really, really genuine person. And, you know, yeah, we've had this long friendship, but a lot of times I, I have to stop and think like, man, this person has to, doesn't have to do any of this. He doesn't have to be there for me at any point. Like, we're not family necessarily, but it's like he's just that kind of person. You know, I mean, he's a real stand up guy and um, it's just something I'm definitely grateful for. You know, what I mean, but whether he was. J. Cole or not, if he was just Jermaine working at the post office, that's an incredible friend to have. You know what I mean? 100 percent 100 percent Now, one thing you talked about, and, and I'm gonna get into the to, to the, you know, you dropping out, you've been working on the album coming up soon. I'm, I'm gonna touch on that a little bit later. But I do want to mention this one thing because you mentioned, you know, your first album came out in 2015, Elephant Eyes. Um, but you've been like literally like this is not even me hyping you up. you've been killing everything that you've been touching like you make sure that if omen is listed in that feature on that track that like your your presence is felt which i respect a lot and like i said being a fan of you earlier on i already know what you bring to the table when you get on track you know i don't think you leave uh i don't think you approach anything without being intentional and being purposeful when you approach your work and your art so one thing i talk about that because balling in newport from d-day the dream, uh, the Dreamville Gangsta Girls tape. Uh, I don't know if you call it tape anymore because the way the streaming things are, but that's why I call it. Um, but it's one of my favorite joints, honestly, because like to me, it, you know, it's just like, it's raw. It's you know, you're you're kind of unpacking like some things maybe that people didn't know about you or people didn't know about you know your upbringing and you know also like your mental state and kind of you know it's just, it involves a lot of like reflection and like revisiting sometimes past triggers and traumas and also a lot of the self-reflection of who you are I would love to kind of know like what was it like putting that song together because you know I know that also was like meant for your album but you know I you know yeah I think you said that you didn't know if it was really going to fit kind of the mold of where your album is going and the the concept of it right now so you let it go here but recording that song and releasing those emotions and kind of tackling those topics. What was it like making that song? Um, I actually wrote that song at Boss's crib in LA. Um, I was staying there for a couple of weeks, just out there working. And I just woke up one morning and like, it was like a run of maybe three or four days where I just felt like I was in a zone. Like I was just waking up writing and everything I was writing just felt effortless. Like it felt like 
it just felt like I was in sync with something. I don't know. It just felt good. And so um, I remember I wrote that. I wrote it. I wrote the whole song pretty quickly. Like, I think that day, I mean, maybe like an hour or so. But, yeah. um, and I remember I did a voice note and it's like, I could feel like I really resonate with these words. I like, I think I, I think I might've sent the voice note to Cole. He was like, damn, like I can hear the zone. Like he could feel it. He's like, I can feel the zone you're in. Like it's, it feels so effortless the way the words are going together. Um, and so I don't really know where that came from, but it was just, I was in a place where, like I said, like you said, I was working on my album and for a long time, that was the intro to my album because like you said, it's very transparent. Mm -hmm. I felt like and from the jump, people get a, get a sense of like, what's my story? Where, what, what's gotten me to the point I'm at now? Um, what kind of person am I like? So you could really get a vivid sense of that. Um, and it was just, um, I felt like coming off of Elephant Eyes, I had talked a lot about my upbringing as well, but not necessarily like, like I, I talk about the brothers I never had in that song because it's like a group of four or five of us uh, homeboys that I had that I knew since like maybe eight, eight years old. And we all had hoop dreams, you know, trying to make the NBA, playing video games, just hanging, not really, not really indulging in um, what the normal, normal situations of Chicago, which is like gang initiations and sure. drug dealing. And this was our escape, you know what I mean? And so I cherish those relationships because in a sense, they kept me out of trouble. They kept me out of like situations just by having that bond. And so when it came time to, for D-Day, I was really, I really was attached to the song, but the the album really went in a different direction. Like I really wanted to challenge myself on this album to experiment and, you know, show people and show myself that I could do something that maybe I haven't done before. And it will still be as quality as what I'm known to do. Um, because I felt like I was getting to a point where I was making, I had, a, I had plenty of material enough to release an album, mm -hmm. but it felt like, it felt like these songs I was, I was making were the best versions of something I already might've done. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, that's cool, but I can do better. I can, I can, even if, and which was happening, all the people around me, even people in Dreamville, like, yo, you're tripping. The music's crazy. Like, but it's it's honestly Cole was one of the few people that I sat down with him and played him a bunch of music and he was like echoing the same things I was feeling. Hmm. He's like, man, these songs are dope, but this other idea you had over here, this is special. I never heard only I feel like, I feel like only you could do that. You know what I mean? So I needed those, I needed that uh transparency and that honesty because that's what I was feeling anyway. And so I really cherish that because now. I have an album that I feel like it's special. I feel like it's uh, definitely going to surprise people. Um, and it's just, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Like, I, I know it's not even a question in me that this is the best work I've done. Like, it's, it's, so, it's such a different leap. Um, and I noticed that from just the reactions of my friends, my family, people that, you know, your friends and family sometimes are going to, like, uh, sugarcoat or say things like, oh that's dope just to like you know uh, soothe your ego but like I'm right. noticing the reactions are like you know that's you like oh my god that's that's like that's like it's a different type of uh it's like whether they knew me or not they would enjoy this you know what I mean so uh, I'm super excited about it Oof, that got me hyped about the album because I, I think that's that's super fire to hear because you know I think you also come from a standpoint where you know it, it, it has been a while since like the last album so it's like you you do have to kind of reintroduce yourself to the audience to, like new, newer people and stuff like that because the Dreamville audience has grown your audience is also like you know growing with you and stuff like that but it's also you know how do you tell people about you in a way that you haven't done maybe tap into a piece of yourself that you haven't tapped into in order to I mean, for lack of a better word, for God to really work through you to tell to, to, to tell the story that he wants you to tell that you're trying to approach and things like that. So it's really dope to hear that because I think too, we're in we're we're in a place in the industry too where there's just so many different types of music, types of, of approaches. So it's nice to hear that like, you know, you're 
working hard in your craft and you're taking your time with it, but you're also paying attention to the minute details that people may not notice until they live with the project for a little bit or until they really hear you and understand you and get to learn you. And like, that's, that's how I really dope to hear. So that makes me excited for that. I'm, I'm really happy for that. Uh, I appreciate it, man. I, um, you know, it's, it's been a long journey and some of it was things I couldn't control. Some of it was actual, like just overthinking and mm -hmm. sabotage in a sense. But, you know, I, I look at it now as like, all of the things that happened to lead to this music needed to happen because it's like it's a lot of the things that happened created the songs, you know, created the experience that led to these songs. And so um, I'm just excited to put it out and get the music out to people. And like you said, it is it is a, a weird kind of place because even though I've been doing music for a while, mm -hmm. because of the absence and because of the new audience it's almost like I'm coming out like a new artist to a lot of people. Um, and so that's an exciting place, but it's also uh, a weird place a little bit, you know, um, yeah. but it's, it's cool though. And on that too, like I want to ask because, and you know, I know you kind of answered my question about how you approach the album, but when you, when I hear you approach these features and like I said, with this, everything you've been touching on this past year, about albums, albums and things like that, you know, and, and I know I said you go crazy, but I would love to kind of understand the thinking into like how you, so you said you let that go, let that song go for this project because of the concept of the album. But you know, I'm, you said also too, it's, it was hard to let that go because you you knew what that kind of meant for where you were going. So like, what is the mindset when you approach? You know, hey, you know, we're doing this D Day project in like two weeks, and you know, we call you a week ahead. Hey, can you do this song? Compare, you know, and, and having to stand out amongst your peers and you know the label mates compared to, you know, how you can take your time and craftively carefully craft your own project kind of what is that mindset and thought process you kind of put yourself into establish the difference between like hey I'm making myself known here but it's not my full thing but people still need to know who I am and the impact that I make compared to like okay I can take my time here and this is how I'm going to approach this thing here for myself um it's not a super different approach because whether it's just me alone or if it's me you know with Nicole or with Kaz or with Kid, whoever, or just a group of them. Um, I'm always just trying to make something that I love. You know what I mean? Something that's like gonna spark my, like, I feel like I'm the toughest critic. Um, definitely on my own music, but like, I just come from a real musical family. Um, mm -hmm. I've listened to so much, so many different types of music that it's like my palette is just like, it's a lot there. So it's like, I've heard a lot of different music. So I'm hard to impress, even to impress myself. You know what I mean? It's not even about other people. Just like my bar is really high for myself and for the music I like. So it's, um, you know, for, for instance, the song like um, the other song that was on D-Day, Start at Five. Mm -hmm. uh, like Eve sent me that basically the same week as we were finishing the project. And he's like, yo, it's a, it's a empty spot at the end of the song. Like, I think you'd be dope on here. And I'm listening to the beat like, oh my God, like this beat is crazy. First of all, like, I'm right. it's like, I, I said this before, but when he sent me that, it felt like a gift. I was like, thank you. You know, like that, like I hadn't heard a beat that felt like that in a long time. Um, mm -hmm. And so just approaching and that was like, first of all, Kaz and Luke, it's like, you want to just out of respect for your competition, not even, I don't look at this competition, respect for your your comrades, respect yeah. for the people working with. I hold them at a, such a high standard because I'm fans of them that it's like, oh, the first thought is I gotta come right. Like, cause listen <laughs> to what I heard, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta make sure that whatever I'm saying matches that. And so um, that's just, that's the first thing. It's just like having a respect for the craft and the people you're working with. I wanna, I know they're gonna deliver at a certain level. So I, I wanna make sure I am as well. And then particularly with that song, I knew because it had been a while since people heard me, there's a little more, like I'm in, I'm a normally calm, mellow, I think most people would say humble person, but you know, there's a confidence level there because I, I know the work I put in. And so approaching a song like that is like, there's a, a part of me that's like, oh, I gotta let people know, like, if they forgot what it, what it is, or if they don't know what it really is, like, I, whether it's metaphors, whether it's flow, whether it's delivery, it, it all needs to sound like 
you're tripping for not even knowing about what's going on. <laughs> that's, that's how it needs to feel. And so that's kind of the approach with that. As far as my own album, I have those moments where it's like, I'm trying to prove something, but it's really, that's not really the goal. It's more so like, how can I tell my story in a way that's going to connect with people? Like, because mm. to me, that's the, that's the goal. Like, it's like, you can impress somebody with some bars and they'll, they'll enjoy that for a little while. But if you actually connect with them and tell a story or tell a, you know, have a song that like resonates with something they went through in their life or uh, something happened in their childhood or something they're going through right now or something they may go through in the future, that, that might stick with them for their whole life. You know what I mean? Like, because a lot of songs, it is about how good the song is, but songs stick with us based on memories. Like I can remember Kanye songs because of what I was dealing with in my life at the time, whether it was right. in high school, or college. And like, so that's what I'm always striving for. It's like, how can I make something that's gonna like connect to the listener? Cause that's what I enjoyed the most out of music. Whether I was listening to Nanaz or Common or Most Def or whoever, I remember those moments on the train where I was going through it and I might've heard a verse or a song and just played that song over and over. Cause it was like, man, this person speaking my life. It feel like somebody else can relate to what I'm dealing with. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's the goal is to um, get those goosebumps myself first. And then I think, you know, if, cause if I don't feel it, how can I expect somebody else to feel it? You know, so it's like, you gotta move me first. And then I feel like, because I'm such a hard to person, hard to please person, if it moves me, it's probably gonna move the next person, um, which is usually what occurs. You know, the songs that people really, really talk about, Enchanted or like Cage Bird or uh, Love Drug or Motion Picture, songs that like people resonate with in my catalog, I felt that feeling first. So it's like when they say it, I'm like, I was right, you know, like it's rare that I put out a song that I'm like, oh my God, this song is amazing. And people are like, nah, like, it's like, it's, it's really, it's rare. You know what I mean? It, of course you have songs that you think is going to be like, this is the one people are going to react to and they might react to something else. But yeah. um, that's my long answer to that, to that question. Really. No, I love it. I love it. Um, you know, we talked about feelings, you know, like how you make people feel. And one way to like, you know, connect the people, make them, you know, feel something is also by just being engaged with your community. And with that being said, you know, we're donating 15K to the Dreamville Foundation to make sure they continue to do the work. Fire, I didn't know that. Impacting the community. Um, for those who, you know, like, don't know about the, uh, I guess like I don't know about the Dreamville Foundation because I, I know they, they know the, the label, they know the music, but like, mm -hmm. you know, how, how could you kind of let people know about Dreamville, the Dreamville Foundation and kind of, you know, how, like, not how it came to be, but the mission of it? Um. Well, I will say I haven't been super involved with Dreamville Foundation because it's, it's it was based in Raleigh uh, or North Carolina for a while. And mm -hmm. I think they're expanding, you know what I mean, with with things like the Dreamville Shot League um, in Chicago. And so one, I just think, you know, it's um it's important because we all come from these backgrounds where we know what's missing. You know what I mean? We know the right. voice that's there. We know like, whether it's just having like actual mentors or people or positive examples to look toward, whether it's actual resources for, for like school supplies, um, living in food deserts, um, you know, it's a tons of things that we, things that are just advertised in the neighborhoods we come from, whether it's mm -hmm. liquor or food that's gonna kill you. It's like it's so many issues going on in those communities. And, you know, it's important that, I, I wanna make this distinction. I never feel like an artist or a celebrity is obligated to be like a role model or obligated to do these types of, I don't, I don't come from that belief because I feel like you worked hard to get where you at, you do what you want, you know what I mean? Like, right. but, but it's like, I appreciate the people and the artists that do do those things because it is needed, you know what I mean? And so, and it's better to come from somebody that looks like you, that dress like you, that talks like, speaks like you, that had an upbringing similar to yours or, or you know, at least 
at least knows a little bit of how your, your story, a lens that your story is going through to provide those opportunities. Because, you know, it's one thing for like uh, a perfect example, the guys uh, maybe familiar with doing that. They do a podcast, Earn Your Leisure. Oh, yeah. Financial I, Lotto, yeah. I listen to the podcast on the way to here. It's like, you know, they're not the first guys to talk about financial literacy. For sure. But because they look like us, they mm-hmm. speak like us. They, if I can, I feel like, man, I can trust what this guy's saying because it seemed like he know. It seemed like I could have grown with him. He might have been in class with me. He might have been at work with me. They seem like cool dudes. Like that goes a long way. You know, I, mean, I, I remember seeing this study about um, just like the uh, I forget who wrote the study or who did the study, but it was basically a study about the, the achievements or the progress of like. Black students who get taught by a black teacher versus those that get taught by a teacher of a different race, and like uh, just how much further and better those students do when they're actually taught by someone that looks like them. But basically, it's a long way of saying, um, you know, I think Dreamville Foundation is important and necessary, and I'm a, I'm happy to be a part of um, a label that is doing something like that because. You know, whether it's Chicago, whether it's South Central for Cos, whether it's Fayetteville for Cole, whether it's Queens for Eve, whether it's East Atlanta for Earth Gang and JID, Charlotte for Lou, um, DC for Ari, like all of these places are very similar backgrounds. Like uh, maybe different different things going on. Obviously, Fayetteville is different from Chicago, but the poverty is the same. You know, what I mean the the resource, the lack of resources is the same. The lack of positive mentors is the same. And so um, I'm proud that, you know, Dreamville is reaching out to do foundations, reaching out to do things like the Shy League. You know, it's this is a free basketball league, basically, that people can just come and watch for free and see in, possibly NBA players. You know what I mean? So I would have loved to have something like that growing up, but that didn't exist. There was no right. opportunities for that, especially – for like uh, something on the south side of Chicago. That's a rare thing. So I'm just uh, appreciative to be a part of it. For sure, for sure. And, you know, I can't even, I'm not even gonna like add on to what you just said. I think that hits everything perfectly too. Like there's a lot of meat and fruit in what you said too. So I definitely feel that and like agree with you. Now, honestly, I could, you know, be picking your brain all day and hopefully in the future, we will have some future conversations, you know, whether it be personal endeavors or other conversations, I would love to have some future conversations, but, you know, because I am working and I got things, you know, we got to keep it busy over here. And I, you, I know you got to keep it busy over there too. I want to respect your time. So I want to ask you one last question. Um, and this question, I think it goes, you know, as big of a fan as I, as a big of, of a fan as I am of yours, you know, like, you know, I think too, it's important to like do some research. So I kind of was thinking, you know, what is something I can ask you that's like really impactful? And this is what I would really love to know. So on your Instagram, I think your last post was three weeks ago. I'm, I wasn't like certain to your Instagram all creepy, but trust me, we're going somewhere oh. with this. <laughs> and it was, it was a picture of your son and he's uh, watching you perform. I don't know if it's a Dream Girl Festival or just a festival. He's watching you perform. Oh, and- Festival. Dream Girl Festival, right? Okay. And so it says, the caption is, to understand your parents' love, you must raise children yourself. Now, I would love to know, what is it like raising a child within the world that you've worked for, that you've created, so like, you worked hard, so hard to create? What is it like creating, a, a, like raising your child in this world, at the same time, understanding and acknowledging that you're doing your best as a father, as the best, what you learned from your parents, and also just what you've learned from just your knowledge as a man and other people around you. Like, what is it raising a child in this own world of yours and understanding those things at the same time? Um, it's a lot, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> uh, it's uh, I always say it's probably the biggest blessing and biggest challenge that I've had mm-hmm. in my life so far, you know, because you don't get a, you can have incredible parents, but you don't get a guidebook necessarily on how to be a parent. Like, it's like, you're doing it on, just like our parents were, I had, I realized this as a grown man, like, oh, my, my mother, my father, like, you all were doing this on the fly. You didn't really know what you were doing. Like, you, you look at your parents as like superheroes, like, oh, mm-hmm. they got it all figured out. 
and you get to an age where you realize that oh you actually don't have it figured out you just are trying your best um and so you know i look forward to the day that my son has that realization as well but it's a it's a daily process you know what i mean i think um particularly raising a child in the, the world and industry i'm in mm -hmm. it's a little more uh concern for me i guess because even like you like said on instagram I never post his face because I'm just like. I'm gonna keep your stuff to yourself. You don't want all your business out there. Yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm a private person in general, but especially I'm like hyper protective over him. Um, Rightfully so. The internet is just, you know, it's full of characters. It's full of people that are doing things with your pictures. You have no idea they're doing. Uh, just people just do strange things that I, I'll never really get to be able to understand. And I don't mm -hmm. even want to waste the time to try to understand it you know what i mean it's just people come, conversation they're coming from where they're coming from but you know until until i can actually talk to him and say this is what the internet is you understand it you okay with being on it cool like then it's his decision but if it's like he don't even have a say so and i'm just plastering him everywhere i just i know people do that and it's i'm not judging them but just for me it don't work. It's just I, I just I'm too paranoid about it. Like um, even bringing him to Dreamville, Dreamville Fest was like causing me a little anxiety, honestly, because I'm walking through the crowd and people take pictures, they videotaping, and it's just like it seems innocent. And like, yeah, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna like sell the picture to TMZ, but it's just like it's uh, you're in your dad's state of mind. You're thinking like yeah, a dad. like exactly. I'm not thinking as Omen right now. I'm thinking as Damon. The father like it's like i'm all i'm seeing is a stranger take pictures of my son that's that's what i'm that's what's going through my head i'm walking to the crowd somebody says that's your son them even asking me that question is causing me like, like you know like <laughs> can't say no <laughs> yeah exactly um so it's a learning thing. i'm learning how to gauge and how to how to navigate that situation because it was also important. I wanted him to be there to see me perform. He never seen me perform. That was cool, you know, for me. Um, and I, I could tell he enjoyed it. You know, like he's like looking like wow, you know. So that was it. Was it's a it's sacrifice with with the things you receive as well. So you know, I mean, that's just part of it. But you know, I think as as far as being a father, like you said, I'm I'm trying my best, doing my best. I've made mistakes, you know what I mean? I'm probably going to make more mistakes as a father. Um, but you just got to learn from those mistakes. I try to read parents and books. I try to listen to friends of mine who have children. I try to listen to my parents. I try to listen to my grandparents. Um, and it's kind of like being an artist. Like you're not going to, there is no perfect song, perfect album, perfect career. It's, it's a daily thing you're chipping away at making artist is like a work in progress and that's what parenthood is in a sense it's like it's a work in progress and so um it's definitely you know helped give me i think more of a sense of urgency um, in a good way in my life and before my son i never really had real responsibility in my life besides my career so mm. it's definitely be helped me become like an adult like quickly uh, which I probably not even probably I needed I really appreciate you you know can I get busy day I'm looking forward to this album I cannot wait I'm super excited appreciate you cutting our time moment and um thanks everybody for tuning in for, to another episode of community voices we'll see y'all next time peace <laughs>